Let's follow the, or just follow the cloud. Just put your hand on your heart. And just breathe the, the, the air of heaven. Breathe, feel the heartbeat of God. So if we ask the Lord what she's, she's in prophetic, prophetic travail and she's speaking in tongues. You hear it, in, in, I'm teaching now, Native American dialect. And what I was hearing was, I am ready to birth. I am ready to birth. I am ready to birth. See if this resonates. I am looking for a people who will birth. I'm looking for a people who will birth. The Lord is saying, I'm ready to birth over the land. I'm ready to birth over the people. But he's looking for a people that will birth. He needs a people that will birth. And the Lord had given me a vision um, before before everything, and I wasn't sure when to share it, but I could see my mother was a, a nurse, and she would give us these skeletons, and you know, not the bad kind of medical stuff, the medical skeleton, you know. But she also gave me this thing of a, it was the invisible body with oh, yeah. the heart in it yeah, yeah, yeah. and the veins and the um, yeah. arteries, and I could see that. And what does the heart do? The heart makes the blood flow out and come back through. It goes out and it comes back through. And when we hear the heartbeat of God, it not only is for us, but it's to flow into the, the body of Christ. 
you know, it was to me such a symbolic representation of what the heart will do. And we know from the word and from, from biology that the life is in the blood. That's right. That's so when right. the heart beats, it pumps the life of God That's into right. the people, into the ecclesia, into creation. So, Lord, we come into our agreement again. Lord, let all creation groan for the manifestation and waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Lord, and let your heartbeat beat in each one of, the, of those of the birthing centers. Lord, to pulse with the heartbeat of God to bring forth the life of God, which is in the blood, the life of God, to go forth and come back, to go forth and come back. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Lord, let your heart beat bring the life of God yes. back into our state. Yes. Let your heart beat bring the life of God into our communities and our families. Even as I say that, think of those people that you know that are flashing before your eyes that need, need the life of God. Maybe we'll try it again. <laughs> yes. No pressure. Yeah, we could turn the heartbeat off for the, the walking heartbeat here. Um, you know, this is such a privilege to be able to do this, and I want to thank Pastor Chuck for letting me do this. Um, you know, I just am an encourager, and I love to encourage people. And the way that I encourage people is through prophetic words. And um, I have quite a journey, like we all do. We all have our ups and our downs. We've been to the mountaintops, and we've been to the valleys. And um, But what the Lord has shown me over the past couple of years, how important it is whether you're, we're all intercessors. Do you all know that? Nobody is excluded from being an intercessor. That's our, one of our main calls. First one is to worship God, which is, if anybody calls me anything, it should be a worshiper. <laughs> um, but I, I just, you know, I really want to put that out there. I hope we all understand that we've all been called to, to be intercessors. And we all have different things on our heart that God wants us to intercede for and to birth. And, 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 you know, whether it's, you know, for me, if anybody knows my husband and I, um, you know, testimony, we have a son who got addicted to heroin, and he's incarcerated. So where did God put my heart even before any of that happened? I was doing ministry work for 15 years in rehabs, and I thought to myself, God, why do you have me here? You know, but I was interceding for all those addicts and alcoholics that I met, and I met so many young people, and I had such a heart for it, and I would just cry out for them, and, um, and God prepared my heart so that when my son fell into the same category, I had a true understanding of what it was to be a parent of an addict, I'm going to say recovering addict now, um, all the different things that happen. So as an intercessor, you know, you're all called, and you all know what's inside your heart. Who are you crying out for? And so a couple of years ago, what the Lord um, did for me, I've always been, I've always flowed in the prophetic, but I've always been one to hear. And I, you know, I journal a lot, and, you know, I, and I've really been very blessed at the churches that I have been at. They've honored me in being able to give prophetic words over, you know, the congregation. And so I've always flowed in that. And, but I thought, like many people, that there were the seer prophets over here, <laughs> and then the ones that could only hear over here. 
And it wasn't until later on that I realized, after listening to a lot of teachings, we're all called to be seers. Amen. And why do I say that? Because Jesus said, I only do the things I see my father doing. Well, how are you going to see what the father's doing unless you're a seer and in the upper realm? <laughs> so, you know, and then, you know, I, I, I really started to pursue like in 2013, 2014, um, you know, I said to the Lord, and I'm going to be honest with you, this is how I talk to the Lord, and he knows me well enough, and I know God, he, he loves me, he's crazy about me, he really is, and he, I know that, and I have a lot of confidence in who I am with God, and so, um, and I know he gives me grace for when I talk the way that I do, <laughs> but I always start my conversation as, now Jesus, I don't mean to be rude about this, but... And I know he's just like, you know, rolling his eyes. And, but I said, you know what? I, 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 you know, there's got to be more to life than what I'm seeing. There's got to be more to life in you, Jesus, than what I'm experiencing or what I know a lot of people are not experiencing. You know, I, I read the book uh, of Ezekiel, and you translated him here. And, you know, the book of jo uh, Revelation, you know, Jesus is saying, come on up here. And I'm going, well, I want to go up there, too. You know, how do I do that? And what I'm saying, everything is biblical. You can find everything in the Bible. So what I'm telling you is not some, you know, kooky lady up here doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you, we're all, that's it. Our inheritance is to be able to do this. And so back in 2013, 2014, I was talking to the Lord, you know, I'm really like, I'm bored, actually. You know, I really want to be moving on, you know. I want to, you know, do all those things that you read about in the Bible, you know. I want to, you know, come up into heaven. And, and I wasn't, like, really sure how do you even do that. And so the Lord led me to several different ministries um, that I started to listen to, and they so resonated in my spirit. I was like, yes, that's what I want to do too. You know, I just, I can't wait to, you know, ascend the mountain of the Lord and meet Jesus. And, and what I started to do, because God gave us this wonderful imagination. He has an imagination, yeah. and so, so do we. Yeah. So we should be using it. Yeah. So I decided, well, you know, Jesus, uh, what do you feel like doing today? And, uh, you know, I said, how about going to the beach? Hey, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. So what did I do? Jesus and I would be walking the beach yeah, together. Exactly. That's how my yeah. seer started to really yeah. pick yeah. up because I started to use my imagination. I would see things on and off. I mean, when anybody says a seer, I immediately think of Marcy. I mean, I am, I, you know, call me a name, I, but I don't really always connect with, you know, you say, oh, you're a seer, you're this. I'm like, no, I'm just Lynn. You know, that's it. <laughs> but, you know, I started to say to the Lord, okay, you know, I'm going to just really, what do you feel like doing? And this is what I ask the Lord every day. What are you dreaming about, Jesus? What do you feel like doing today? And, you know, we walk the beach together. And one of my favorite things is we have Adirondack chairs, and we both have our individual chairs, and we sit in the chair, and we're overlooking this really beautiful lake. But that's what we're supposed to be doing. Because when I enter in to that rest, into that place of being able just to sit with Jesus, yeah. he's filling me up. Amen. So as I said, I really started to listen to a lot of different people. And it just so resonated with me. And I thought, man, you know what, Jesus? If you're letting them go to heaven, you should be letting me go up there too. I mean, this is open for everybody. So let's just, you know, try to do this. So I started to listen, and I was learning to, to understand we're supposed to be living in two realms. On earth, we're supposed to be in this realm, but we're also supposed to be in the spirit realm. That's right. We're supposed to be able to see what our Father is doing all the time. Because I don't know about you, I don't see the Father working a lot down here sometimes when I'm, um, I'm looking at the natural. Yeah. But see, if I have my spiritual eyes and antennas up, and I've been in heaven with him, then I'm going to know when I come to this realm what the Father is really doing because I have his heart. Because I've just spent time in the heavenly realm with him, chatting with him, talking with him. You know, how does he talk to you? I know how he talks to me, and I, I know how I talk to him. And as I said, I, I might sound irreverent, but, you know, he knows me. And <laughs> he, ch he chuckles when I do things. <laughs> But, I mean, you can go and talk to the Father anytime. 
And even in this time of preparation, because see, I think these next 40 days, there is something major that's going to happen in bounding love. And I've already seen it. And when Pastor Chuck said 40 days, I said, Lord, what's 40 days? And I was like looking it up. Is it going to be like Passover or anything like that? He goes, no, it's 40 days. What <laughs> I went, okay. <laughs> 40 days. But what happened in 40 days after Easter? Pentecost. See, we, we always think everything has to correspond to the natural realm where God isn't restricted by time. <laughs> and he's like, you know, 40 days to me can be whatever I want 40 days to be. So really expect after 40 days. You think the heartbeat was strong just listening to that? The heartbeat of the Father is going to be so strong in this sanctuary that come people on. are going to feel it in the moment they come in. Yes. Come on. So here I am. I'm like so excited because I'm listening to all these people and I can't wait because I just know I'm going to be ascending into the mountain of the Lord and, and I'm just going to be doing all these new things and I'm like, oh, wow, this is great. And all of a sudden, 2014 comes. Wham, bam, as they say, the stuff hit the fan. My son gets arrested. Do you know what distractions in life can do to you? Yeah, come on. So here I am, I'm so excited and all of a sudden, all this stuff hits us. We went through a full year of, you know, my son getting arrested, you know, all heroin, I mean, the whole story. But you know what? I still fought. I fought that I would be one of those seers. I fought that I would see what the Father was doing because I needed to see what the Father was doing because I would never have been able to go into a New York State Correctional Facility and hug murderers. Come on. I had to see them as God sees them. I had to love on them as God loves on them. Amen. We went into Rensselaer County, and the guy was, you know, up for child porn. Marcy and I go in. What do we do? We hug him. Every time. Every time we went in. Why? Because we have the Father's heart. We're spending time in that place of intimacy, yeah. and that's what it is. Yeah. See, I said to the Lord, I want to see people as you see them. And the only way I can do that is ascend into the mountain of the Lord. I can only do that if I am sitting on his lap. If I am sitting, see, a lot of times we, we have a feast. Jesus prepares his table for us. If you don't know, that's Psalm 23. And, oh, it's a wonderful time. He has all these delectable things. And at the end, there's always chocolate. <laughs> He knows me and he loves me. Dark chocolate. It's her table. It's my table. And he knows what I want. He knows what I like. And he's so pleased when I take time out of my schedule da, 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 to come and spend time with him. And when you honor God, when you honor Jesus, when you honor Holy Spirit, what, what do you expect from them but for them to show you so much love? And in that respect, they're saying, okay, come on, you, you want to see as I see? And sometimes what we see isn't always pleasant. Mm -hmm. right. I heard one time that there's a, a room in heaven where Jesus cries, he weeps. And I thought to myself, I couldn't understand that. You know, that was like off my grip because I'm thinking Jesus should always just be happy. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, you're, you're Jesus. I mean, you're happy. You know the end from the beginning. You know, why would you cry? <laughs> but I mean... But he does still cry. He cries over New York State, over what's happened here. He's crying over all the babies that are before him saying, Jesus, I've been martyred for you. When, when, do, I, when do I get my revenge? When are you going to show yourself strong on our behalf? Because, see, I don't want my, my, my little sister who's in my mother's womb down here to be aborted like I was. He starts to give you his heart. Yeah. And as I said, you know, for, for my husband and I, our heart is for uh, addicts and alcoholics and anybody who's in, a, in, in a incar incarceration. But see, when you go into the mountain of the Lord, when you really seek his face, he's going to give you the comfort that you need, the strength that you need to be able to come back here and be able to see as the Father sees. Because how does the Father see? He only sees everybody with love. 
you know, he doesn't see my son as a heroin addict. He sees my son in the way that he created him. He doesn't see Governor Cuomo the way we do. Thank you. Can we, li can we look at these legislators? Can we look at Nancy Pelosi? Can we look at Senator Chuck Schumer and love them the way that God loves them? It's very hard. But when you've spent time in the heavenly realm, God imparts his heart. And you now can look at people and say, you know what, I'm going to look at them as Jesus looks at them. Because, you know, Jesus, didn't Jesus hang on the cross for them? Didn't Jesus say, you know, we're all heirs of salvation? Everybody has a right to the salvation. It's up to us whether or not we accept it. But what are we as the body of believers doing? Are we praying for our leadership? I mean, can you go into the heavenly realm and get the information that you need, the strategies that you need to be able to pray? How about the, the people at, at your workplace that are driving you nuts? <laughs> you know? Can you turn it around and say, okay, Jesus, how do you want me to look at this person? And then when I look at that person, what do you want me to see? Show me your heart for that person, and you might be surprised what that other person's going through. And they're acting the way that they act because of the hurt and the wounds. Nobody's, no, you don't know what anybody else has walked through. So to be able to see is wonderful. And it is my, like, I can't wait to see, I would say, oh, I can't wait to see like Marcy sees. But you know what? Marcy and I are totally different. Marcy has been a seer since whenever. And the Lord is just teaching me how to see. But the way and the why he's showing me how to see is because I went after his heart. At the stage that I'm at, I'm like, God, I don't, I want to see because I want to know how, how you see a person. I want to know that when I talk to, to Eric and Wendy, what is on their heart that I need to be able to give an encouraging word? Because that's what it's about, isn't it? I mean, God wants to encourage us. He wants to be our strength. He wants to be our grace. He wants to be everything for us. So what are we doing? Hey, it doesn't it say pull heaven down? Well, how about if we all ascended up to the heavenly realm, see what's going on in heaven, and then bring it back down to earth, and that's what it is. Because if you can see the Father and what he's doing, you can't wait to do that. You can't wait to bring down heaven to earth. Amen. You can't wait to bring down the strategies from heaven. And like the, the new birthing uh, centers that are going to be all throughout New York State. I'm honored to be able to be part of that. Amen. Because there's already people that have birthing areas. But now we're going to breathe new life into them. And that's what God wants. He wants us to be able to breathe new life into us no matter where we go. And how about you go up and you're sitting with Jesus and, and you know, you're, you're having your whatever you like to eat. And he's sitting there and he says, uh, you know, eat of me. Wow. I thought, gee, I could eat of Jesus. Now, if I ate Jesus, hmm, I get joy. Amen. Have you ever thought about that? You're sitting there and he says, come and eat of me. You know, eat me. Drink my blood. You know, you're thinking to yourself, wow, yeah. But how about if you take it to a different level? <laughs> I'm munching on Jesus, so what am I getting? I'm getting his joy. Yay! <laughs> I'm getting his peace, his loving kindness. I'm getting grace. Whatever I can grab from Jesus, eat from him, I'm eating the richness of Amen. Jesus. So I'm sitting at this table, and we're chit-chatting away, and, and sometimes he'll say to me, how about if you, I want you to pray for the Sudan. I was like, the Sudan? <laughs> But I mean, when you have a relationship with Jesus and you can spend time with him, he's going to ask you to pray for a lot of different things. Come on. I mean, you know, how about we're called to call nations to be sheep nations? Because Jesus said the, it was, go and make nations. Come on. 
Yes. Disciples the nations. It's not, you know, when you get a nation, you get all the souls in there. But how about when you spend time with Jesus in that heavenly realm, and when we learn to go ascend in there and stay in there, it's not a quick, hey, Jesus, nice to have a burger, and then you leave. It's a nice time you just sit and you rest in him. You let him heal your heart. You know, that's a biggie. Yeah. Okay. Will you let go? Will you let go of all the hurts and the pains and the anguish and say, you know what, Jesus, I'm going to trust you with this. It's been hard, Jesus, but I'm going to trust you with it no matter what. And when you try, really, and that's a process. I mean, you know, I've had many, many years <laughs> of learning to trust Jesus in the most difficult times. But, you know, every time I've done that, I feel like the Lord's taken me higher into him. He's trusted me to give me another assignment. Yeah. And, um, you know, as I said, you know, I, I've been in the prophetic, and I love to give prophetic words to people. My, my, I just absolutely love to encourage people. That is like my main thing to do. But, you know, I'm so excited that when God can take me into his realm, let me love on people that I never thought I could love. As I said, we were, my husband and I visited eight correctional facilities in three and a half years. And when we could walk into a facility and they had uh, three, four black men sitting at a table, and I looked at them, and I said, hey, gentlemen, how are you doing? And they, they looked around. They didn't know who I was talking to. But see, God showed me to love and respect no matter who I was talking to. And, you know, we, we made an impression on them that they couldn't wait for us to get there. Our son was in Attica. And that was a really tough thing. And, I, I, you know, I said to the Lord, are you sure? that <laughs> Have you made a mistake here? You know, Attica, you know, let's get on the same page here, you know. <laughs> I don't know if you heard about Attica. But he had an assignment for us. But see, I went into the heavenly realm, and I said, you know, I, this, I was devastated when our son went to Attica. Because if you know anything about Attica, it's, it's a very tough facility. And the Lord said, trust me. And I was like, okay, I'm going to trust you. And we had an assignment and within three months, he was out of that facility as soon as the assignment was completed. But see, I spent time in the heavenly realm. I went up and I sat with the Lord and I said, this is really difficult. You know, it's Attica. You know, like I needed to keep explaining to him <laughs> where he was. <laughs> like, you know, geez, God, did you miss the mark here? <laughs> I mean, are you a little confused? You know, Attica was something else. Or, you know, but... But God had a purpose for all of it. He's got a purpose for all of it. But the only way you're going to know your purpose is by ascending and going into that heavenly realm and learning how to legislate. Because as the ecclesia, as the body of believers, we're supposed to be governing down in this earth. We're supposed to see how it works in heaven and bring it down to this level. There are three levels to intercession. The first is identification. And we identify in two ways. We identify with the heart of God. And that's what she's, we, we do that when we ascend. And we, uh, we identify with the heart of God. The second then is to carry the travail of God's heart for that person. But if we identify and we travail, then the outworkings of that, among other things, besides the answer, is we get authority. And you begin to step into a seat of authority that you have not stepped into before. And so this is not tied in with the seeing part of it so much, although it can, can be tied in. But God wants us to identify... You can't have authority over that which you don't love. I'll let you think about that. You, you can't have authority over that which you don't love. Because the first step when you ascend is you begin to get the heart of the Father and you begin to love 
people the way he loves them. Over the top, past all their stuff. And as we love with the love of God, then we begin to travail and carry the heartbeat of God to birth his will over that person or situation. As we do that, then we step into new levels of authority. And with those new levels of authority come new assignments. And we continue to ascend. I just, we, we want to do uh, an exercise because we're going to apply what Lynn was teaching for a moment. But I just wanted to announce real quick that uh, Pastor Jim Jorgensen, this is actually School of the Prophets. Matt is here. Matt is his, his assistant. Um, he's got some envelopes here. If you feel to give to Breath of Life Missions, we have those envelopes. Um, he also has the books in the back, Prophetic Tsunami. How much are those, Matt? $15. 15 if you, th those are from other schools of the prophets. So if you would like those, you know, you can see Matt at the end of the time. We'll leave a basket in the back. And we'll leave a basket in the back if you want to give an offering for uh, Pastor Jim. He's heading for Dominican not real long from now or Haiti. So he's got good stuff going on. But we do, we do an exercise where we... We, we practice seeing, we practice going ascending. And, and some of you have been with me in, in Thursday night prayer. We've done this before, but I'm going to invite you if you want to do this. And you're going to say, well, this might just be my imagination. Well, that's how it starts. It's, it, you say, well, I never have seen before in my life. Well, how to, you know, close your eyes and just picture the scene of the woman at the well. And you say, well, that's just my imagination. Yes, but you're awakening the gift. Or picture Jesus riding into Jerusalem on the donkey. That's, that's how we activate our ability to see. And every time anything you said that, people will see it. Every time, when people start to activate, if people say, I absolutely have never seen in my life, and even when we do some practices they can't see, one of the things to pray about is, is there a, a wounding there, a trauma that's shutting that gate that God wants to heal you from. And that's just another thing. So this is how we activate this gift. Get, kind, just kind of sit back and get comfortable. And then say this very conversationally. I love Lynn's style because she's just so conversational with the Lord. Just say, Jesus, show me where you are around me. And just let him show you. So, Lord Jesus, we just thank you that we can come and we can ascend. And so, Lord, even now as we're learning in Holy Spirit, you're our teacher. Show us, Lord Jesus, where you are around us. And just begin to look with the eyes of your heart. Sometimes you see him on, on your right side. Sometimes you see him on your left or behind you or in front of you. If you're unaccustomed to this, immediately you begin to think, well, this is just my own mind. But don't go there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We, when you see where he is, just say very conversationally, Jesus, can I take your hand? Just reach out and take his hand. And once you have your hand, just conversationally, just say, Jesus, show me what you want me to see.
as he shows you things, just stay there in that place. Because many times he'll take you on a low journey. As you look around, ask him questions, dialogue. Stay there, enjoy his presence. And to ask him, why is he showing you that? Know that what you're seeing is strictly from the heart of God. Ask him if he wants to give you something in that place. Just receive what he wants to give you. Some little gift, some impartation. what Ashley what you're seeing but I see God giving you green emeralds so just receive your green emeralds you want to give some away I'll take some You th- when you feel like you're, you know, you're finished, just kind of just open your eyes. Thank you.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Boy, it's Wendy and Eric. I just I don't know what the other. I just feel like God's going to awaken. I have the ability to see in both you. He's going to take you, Wendy. He's going to take you on a little field trip. Thank you, Lord. Okay, we'll let a couple of the, those who are accustomed to this share, and then we'll have some of the others who aren't so accustomed share. I won't pick on you, though. <laughs> so, uh, when, uh, Marcy, you want to share what you're seeing? Sure, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Thank you, Lord. Well, um, huh? You saw that? Yeah. Uh, I think that for me, um, like what Lynn said, you know, the Lord knows what we need in season and out of season. And he knows that we've come from a very rough 12 years of a lot of hard work. And so tonight, he just said, come with me and let's just, you know, same as Lynn, I like to just sit by the beach. And we were just sitting at the beach watching the waves. And I'm just sitting there watching. And he said, I said, do you need something? What am I supposed to be doing? He said, nothing. And I said, but I always do something. He says, nothing. And I said, do you want me to just sit here and enjoy this? Yes. And so I sat there. And I just watched the ocean come in and out and in and out. And I said, can you explain this to me? Not now. We're doing nothing. <laughs> and I said, OK. And I could just feel my whole body you know, like I'm putting my hand on his heart, and he's just totally relaxed. So now I'm totally relaxed. And I'm just loving every moment of it. And I'm saying, okay, Lord, I hope there's some other people in this room that are saying, just relax. Will you quit? Will you stop? And just rest. And I said, okay. So then finally when Chuck said, um, I have a gift. He has a gift for you. And I was like, okay, what's the gift? And I started thinking, I could give you a, no, don't give me a list. <laughs> and so then he said, just put your hand out. And I put my hand out. And they were little nuggets of gold. And I said, nuggets of gold? And he said, yeah. Put them in your pocket someday. You're going to need those truths to share with nations. That's awesome. I, because uh, I've done this exercise before, <clears throat> and like Marcy, like uh, Lynn, it always is on a beach, and I'm always walking with Jesus, and I'm, and I, I'm walking with Jesus on the sand, and He's just a little bit ahead of me, like, kind of turning like this toward me to talk to me. And he goes, let's go up. Um, if you know of a beach, then sometimes they have like a little hill and you can see the beach grass. And, and he said, let's go up and sit in the chairs and just look at the ocean. It's the same type of thing. But after, as we were sitting there, he said, look over at the horizon. And I've never seen this before. Because we've done this exercise and I've actually gone to heaven and I've seen heaven. And uh, but this time, um, I I was sitting and watching the horizon, <laughs> and I, I I can't share everything. I'm, I'm going to share it with him later. But one of them was I saw the church. I saw the church in 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 the new building. Okay, and I saw the building over here in the middle. Like then I saw. Um, us functioning in the courts. It was like my whole life was in the, he said, and, and so I'm asking him these questions like, well, how are we going to be able to just sit here and watch? Just sit here and watch. Same type of thing. He said, just sit here and watch. And it was a whole bunch of stuff. And then when you said, and there was a whole gamut, it was like a whole, the whole horizon, I could see it. And he said, what do you want? Well, then I, I saw myself in the entranceway of the church with a maitre d' 
with a cummerbund <laughs> with the um, uh, like a like like a towel <laughs> over him, and and he had a tray, and he said, "Come and eat at the table. Come and eat at the table." And I didn't actually go in, but it was like a gift to be able to go in and it, sit at the table. That was my gift. I, it was like a gift to me to be able to sit at his table with him, you know. And it it was just it was cool. I was that was different than what we've done before. Amen. Amen. So, and and I'm going to give other people a chance, but you know, if you didn't get those kind of panoramic type of visions. Don't be discouraged because it really does take pra practice in a sense. And m the practice is more of a, of a yielding in your spirit and not turning off your brain, but letting your brain get quiet enough that you can hear your heart because our spirit is connected to the Holy Spirit in our heart. And so when I first started doing things like this, I'd say, okay, I'm closing my eyes. Okay, I'm thinking, what am I going to see? And lo and behold, I don't see anything. Why? Because I'm trying to see with my brain. So I'm seeing a Corvette. <laughs> Instead of my 2003 Subaru. <laughs> yeah, that's got to be God. <laughs> God has a sense of humor. That's right. That's right. See? You were seeing the same thing. I feel a witness. I feel a witness. <laughs> but, 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 but it takes practice to, to not turn off your brain, but quiet it enough to hear your heart. I'm going to ask one of the three in the back row there what you were seeing. You can, you can throw each other under the bus. Just, be, just because I uh, different age groups and different backgrounds and so on. So I had a vision that had nothing and had nothing to do with me, like personally, um, but it was for New York State. Um, so God showed me New York State through a curtain and he just was like, look what I have. <laughs> um, and he said, well, he showed me the famous, um, I love New York sign and that we're famous for with the heart. <laughs> and he said, I'm the one that loves New York. Um, so. Um, sorry, I hate standing in front of people. <laughs> um, and he said, I'm going to fill New York with my love, and that heart is my heart. And um, he showed me three different colors. And do you want to do the color part? So the color part that she saw was purple, orange, and yellow. So starting with purple, you saw that one first? Well, it, was kind of, it was like a, a mixture. So purple meaning like riches, royalty, power. Sovereignty of Christ, repentance of, of sin. And then orange was um, strength, red passion, um, and yellow was light and purity. And that's what he was covering New York State with. Okay, so when someone gets something, it was something like that. Now, right now, Father... We come into agreement with what you were showing, Ashley, yeah. Yeah. that your father heart of your love would cover New York, that we declare and decree with your heart, I love New York. Yeah. Yeah. With all of our stuff, we declare and decree your heart, which is I love New York. And Lord, that you would release every color that's in your spirit over New York, that it would have blanket us as a mantle, as a coat of many colors. And it would bring forth your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. We agree 
with that vision that you were showing, Ashley. In Jesus' name, and Lord, birth in the birthing centers what needs to happen to bring that to pass. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Someone, Dave? So it started out, I saw Jesus sitting beside me, and he had a crown of thorns on his head, and I was asking him, uh, why do you have the crown of thorns? And he says, because I've taken your mental anguish, and it, I saw the crown pressed on his head, and blood uh, began to flow, and then I felt something happening in my head, and I've been dealing just with a lot of confusion and different things uh, from the enemy. I've gotten some prayer recently, gotten some relief, but... um. I uh, believe I got more tonight. And so after that, we were sitting at a, a beach there and looking out at the ocean. And and in the distance, there was this ship. It was like a, and uh, we flew over to the ship and landed. It was like a cargo ship, and there were these smokestacks and stuff. And there were these wooden crates on the deck there. And one of the crates uh, opened up, and it was like all dark in there, and there was like this... Uh, demon inside and I'm like Lord why are you showing me this he's because I've you know I'm taking it away you know I'm taking all this mental anguish these dark uh, things away and then I received this golden orb from him that I put in to my head and then he gave me um, like a like a kingly I don't know kind of a ma mantle it's like maybe you've seen him before it's like sort of like a cape with like red like red fuzzy red with the um the white, the white edging, and the black spots, and a, and a crown, and he uh, spoke to me. I'm taking away the pauper mentality and giving you a kingly mentality. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So when he got something like that. God is acknowledging, sorry, I about, forgot about the camera. God is acknowledging that he's been in a battle about the mental anguish. And Jesus met him right where he is. And he said, let me remove that mental anguish. So if that was you, then what would the next step be that you would take? You'd come in agreement with it, right? You would receive that healing from him and continue moving forward because that's like a court case in, in heaven, Correct. And that court case, just the verdict was, you're healed. Amen. And he gave you the golden ore of God. You're covered in the red robe, the blood of Jesus, and the royalty of who he is. And he's removed the anguish from you. So what he would do now is say, Father, I just thank you for that. And I receive what you've given me. And I declare it. And I plant this in my life and in my heart. And from this day forward, I'm going to walk free from that mental anguish. And I'm not going to revisit it. I'm not going to be looking for it. I'm not going to plan on it. Because the verdict from heaven says that I'm healed and whole and I'm set free. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. Right, the vision confirmed what God was doing. So there are a number, number of, of purposes when God shows you something, some of it is just fellowship, just loving on us. But then there are other times that there can be purpose behind it, even birthing purposes prophetically in your heart that you have not had before or birthing his heart in new ways. Someone else, you, you want to share? Alice, come on up. So I wish I could say I was on the beach with you guys, but he had me working. Um, I saw him standing against the wall, leaning against the wall, and he goes, hey, Lisa, see all this? And he's talking about the equipment and the live streaming and everything that we're putting out on the air. And he goes, this is just beginner stuff. Then he showed me this big booth with all this controls and all these different TVs being used and stuff. He goes, you see that man? And I was actually looking at the screen. I didn't close my eyes. He says, you see this man right here? He's got so much in him that needs to be put out in the air. And I said, but Lord, we're, we're thinking about a new church and how are we going to afford all this? He goes, come here. 
come over here, look at this room. And he opens up this door, and here's this big treasure room. He goes, don't worry, I got it. I, feel, I, I receive it. <laughs> Open up the door. <laughs> So, Father God, we are just so blessed that you see so much potential here that needs to get out. The things that you are flowing in and out and through this church, Lord, that you are going to provide a platform for this to get out into the world, Lord, because there are so many people that need to hear the words and the sound and the movement that is coming out of this church, that is being birthed out of this church, Lord, that you are going to provide each and every need and thing that is necessary lord for it to come to pass we thank you lord that no thing is too big for you you are the god of impossibilities lord and we don't look at it as impossible when you are involved and we just praise you lord and we thank you in jesus name Amen. so as she's sharing that and what happens sometimes is when he gives someone a vision and they start sharing it i can see their vision and I see it like they saw it. And then he adds even more. So I saw multiple cameras back here. And I saw a school where he even trained the cameramen. Yes. Well, I, when, when she was saying that, though, what I was seeing was not, because she said, what was the part with the booth? It was a big, it was a bigger booth. So it was like it was in a different building. That's what I saw it as. Jesus. Sometimes, and I just want to put that, you know, sometimes you might see things prophetically that require some kind of interpretation. Okay, sometimes they're more literal. Visions tend to be more li li literal, but not necessarily. I've had symbolic visions, yep. and I've had very realistic dreams. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't have to. But in general, and, and the others can, can confirm, visions, pictures that you have in your awake, tend to be a, a little bit more literal, and dreams tend to be more symbolic. Yep. But if there's someone, if you had a vision, or you were sitting here and had an encounter with God that was symbolic and you don't understand, and you want to share that, maybe there, you, if you want to share that, we can get people to interpret. Anybody? Just make it sure. Okay, good. So everybody knows what God was saying. That's awesome. I just saw, I, I'll share a little bit for what I was seeing. When I tend to do this, when I, when I do this, I tend to feel like I'm leading my junior high class on a field trip. <laughs> We used to, I, when I taught the sixth grade, we used to take 110 kids to Howe Caverns. And there were a couple I would have liked to leave there, but <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> they had a future, that's right, in spelunking. <laughs> but when we got there, there was, sure enough, we were on a field trip. And I, I saw us in a cluster, and then I saw us split into four different directions. And the first direction, there was a group that went into a cave, and into a dark cave. And I heard people in that dark cave saying, you know, Lord, I can't see where I'm going. I'm, this is scary. And I heard the Lord say, just stay with me. I got your hand. Just trust me. And as he took them through the dark cave, they got to the end of the cave, and there was this beautiful, well-lit, they called it a grotto. The grotto was like a, uh, a cave that opens to the sea. And, and there the shafts of light are coming down, and, and God had taken them through this dark place into this beautiful, well-lit cave that was covered with jewels. And he was just saying, if you keep your hand in my hand, I'll take you through this thing. 
The second group, he took them up to a high mountain. And he took them up on the mountain and he began to say, I want to show you new things that you haven't seen before. And so one group went off this way. The second group went off this way to the mountains, the snow top, the high, beautiful. The third group headed off this way. And all of a sudden, we're in a place like we're in a, a Supreme Court. We're in a justice building. And, and I felt that group was going, God was showing you things of righteousness and justice that are in his heart that he wants to have you re step into or release on earth. The fourth group went off this way, and that group just ended up and right at the feet of Jesus, just sitting there, just, just chilling with Jesus, just having and you, that, that beach time. I didn't see the beach, but I just saw them just sitting at the feet of Jesus, just being with him. And so I don't know if that resonates, if you were which one of those four you were a part of. But it, he was like he was taking each one of us on an individual trip based on his great love for us. Amen? Amen. Anything else? Roy, did you have something? Can you see me now? <laughs> I'm not blocking the camera. I'm in it. <laughs> a little personal joke between me and Alyssa. When, when, Beverly, when Beverly was here, she says, you got to move. When you stand up, I can't see her. Um, He's been doing that, <clears throat> rocking me. Uh, I was sitting here, and Pastor Chuck said, uh, visualize. And I remember the vision I had when I was in Kenya, and he reminded me of that. What I found was uh, sitting there, he was right in front of me, had his hands out, and I took his hands and There were no word exchanged. It was just you could just feel the love. Then I finally spoke and says, I want to love you more, Lord. And uh, he didn't say anything. He just, you could see it in his eyes. <coughs> He could feel his, I could feel his heartbeat in mine. <clears throat> and um, when she was playing that heartbeat, I was sitting there and I took my heartbeat and it was beating to the same rhythm as the, what she was putting on the screen. And uh, I said, Lord, I says, I want to feel your heartbeat every day. Amen, amen. Anyone else? If not, we're going to pray. And, you know, we're going to be back here tomorrow night at 6. Uh, if you can't make it, you know, it, but God is, is moving your spirit to pray with us. It's just a one-line prayer. Lord, birth the birthing centers in New York State. And give us, now we can add, give us your heartbeat for life. Give us your heartbeat. 
Um, if you had something you wanted to, you didn't understand it, but want to share it privately, and you want to talk maybe to Lynn, Marcy, Mary Beth, Janelle, I, anybody, you know, you say, I saw this r green dragon. Yeah. You know, we were in the courts the other day. I, I, I'll di I divert. We're, <laughs> we're in the courts the other day. We saw this accuser came in, and it looked like that Mucinex. <laughs> this Mucinex booger monster, whatever you want to call him. Can you imagine that's going around the world, that we're talking and abounding love it about a booger monster. They are going to say, he, his cheese slid off the cracker. <laughs> but if you saw something, maybe not like that, but you want to just get some interpretation, just see some, somebody. But, but know that just as we did it here together, you can do that at home. Please do this at home. Get quiet, put on some music, go before him with no agenda other than to just just chill with Jesus. Just go to the beach, sit in the chair. And then as he does that, he imparts his heart to us, and then we function from that reality. Amen? Amen. So, Father, we seal this time, Lord, in the blood and the light of Christ Jesus, that nothing be lost or stolen. We we seal, Lord, and we trust that we got your will done tonight, Lord, to birth the birthing centers over New York State and fill those birthing centers with your heartbeat, O oh, oh God. We thank you, Lord. Bless each one as they go. Keep them safe. And we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.